Hi there, this is Love Johar. Thank you so much for watching this channel. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. A very important video for all of you out there who are trying to understand what is risk management process. We will discuss everything about risk management, the entire process, along with all these steps in this video. Please watch carefully and please keep on creating notes as well because these notes will help you remember whatever we are discussing in this video. Okay. So we will discuss all these steps which are involved in the risk management process which every organization should go through uh, regularly and periodically so that the organization can protect themselves against the cyber security incidents uh, of uh, you know which are associated with the business these days so every organization nowadays needs to do some sort of risk management in place uh, you know, if you do not have any sort of risk management, risk registers or risk assessment reports in place, then you might be in a vulnerable position. OK, so please reconsider that thought. So having said that, what is the risk management? First of all, what is a risk management all about? So it is basically understanding, forecasting and evaluating what sort of risks can happen to the business and determining the impact of those risks. What kind of impact could be there? It could be impact to finance, financial impact. It could be the reputational impact, the brand impact of the business. It could be people impact as well, safety of the people in the business. And accordingly identifying the steps to avoid the risks or reduce their impact. See, risk can never be completely eliminated. So there will, there will always be steps in order to either avoid the risk or reduce the risk and their impact. Okay. So risk mitigation is basically a kind of proactive response which the organization takes so that in case of uncertainty, if some bad things happen, the organization is prepared. Okay. And there is no alternative to risk management. Uh, you know, you have to do it. And uh, you have to make sure that you are prepared for any sort of cybersecurity incidents. And you should be ready to protect your organization in case of those events. And uh, otherwise, there would be serious consequences and damages to the business. Okay. So risk mitigation and management can actually help us understand where we should invest our money in order to protect ourselves. What should be those priorities? And also where we do not need to invest the money, where the risk is very small or not considerable at all. So that's why risk management is very important. Okay. So what is risk management process? So here in this uh, photograph as well, the screenshot that I have shared, you see the entire risk management process. It's nothing but a series of steps that you should be taking periodically in order to assess the risks and mitigate the consequences which are present in your business. Okay. So this should become a part of the organization culture, first of all, and it should be actually done on a cycle and it should be iterative process. And it is not a project, not a one-time activity. So you should not do it on a yearly basis. It should be a periodic process. Okay. So let us understand step one what is assessing the risks so when we say step one assessing your risks so it means that everything in risk management starts with the risk assessment you have to understand that you have to understand what are the factors in your organization and in your environment that are potentially dangerous okay you might want to think about everything that has the potential to take your business down completely Okay, now what, what do I mean by that? It could be anything. It could be uh, something like a natural disaster. Okay, so, and you have to think about technological risks as well, like single point of failures. If there is only one server which you have, which is hosting the website and it is a, it is a critical uh, website and it goes down. So you need to understand whether it, it is equipment or people. So you need to understand if, if there is any sort of critical aspect, critical people or critical equipment, things like that are important to the business. Okay. There could be a risk to a particular location. 
where the business is operating on a particular location as well or in the area where your business is residing there could be gas leaks there could be n number of things could be there okay and you need to understand that you assess your risks properly okay after assessment once you have made a list of all the risks which are being faced by your company by your business now you need to evaluate them okay now how do you do that you do the risk evaluation in terms of how severe the impact would be and secondly would be likelihood okay these are two things that are very common and you must be uh, you know having uh, heard about them in the past as well so you do that but the most important thing in evaluation is you prioritize them okay now how do you do that first of all there are four categories when you evaluate the risks number one is high impact and highly likely to occur second is high impact and less likely to occur these are self explanatory okay you can make these four categories when you are evaluating the risks low impact and highly likely to occur low impact and less likely to occur okay so these are different uh, you know prioritization sections that you can create in order to evaluate your risks and prioritize them accordingly okay so now after that step 3 is to figure out your risk profile now what is your risk profile okay how much risk is the organization willing to take is the organization uh, willing to take a lot of risks is the organization comfortable with having a lot of risks okay is the organization risk exposure close to zero okay so risk appetite and risk tolerance both refer to how much risk an organization is prepared to accept in pursuit of its business objectives okay risk appetite is a broader statement okay and given uh, an organization with a high risk appetite might accept a high uh, you know uh, risk so an organization where you have proper risk appetite and risk tolerance is very important okay so you need to set acceptable level from the higher management for for the organization in which you are operating what is the risk appetite that the organization is willing to tolerate depending upon the business objectives that the organization is trying to achieve this is step 3 okay now step 4 is very easy and you might might be already familiar with that is choosing your risk strategies four risk strategies we all know avoiding the risk reducing the risk sharing the risk and accepting the risk avoiding the risk is exit the entire process altogether do not do those activities that are producing that particular risk generating that risk okay second is reducing the risk you type of implementing controls you implement controls in order to reduce the likelihood or impact of a negative event occurring that's how you reduce the risk share the risk simple take out insurance for the particular risk to get the cover accept the risk simply live with the risk okay and if the threat occurs you will have to simply bear the consequences these are four simple steps step 5 is executing your risk strategies you have to implement now the strategies that you have decided decided in step 4 in step 5 okay after that very important is measuring residual risk so residual risk refers to how much risk is left over after you have adopted your risk mitigation strategies it is the amount of risk left in your system after you have followed step 1 through 5 okay so it basically tells you whether your risk mitigation strategies were successful or not okay so if your residual risk remains outside your manage- management tolerance so you need to go back and beef up your mitigation strategies if your residual risk is significantly very less than the amount of risk management Uh, you know then the uh, amount of risk management will accept you might be spending too much money on the risk mitigation process okay so you think accordingly so you might have to uh, ease up on some of your risk management strategies okay so there is a good balance here you must understand that and if you are still not sure how to measure residual risk you can ask me in the comment section because this is important concept and now the other part is you know you have to repeat this cycle as i already mentioned this should be a periodic process okay 
you have to do it and you have to make sure that you uh, you know do this as a periodic process so what are the pitfalls here where could you be not performing these activities on a step by step basis so there could be many reasons now why an organization would not perform these activities and this is a bonus thing which i am providing in this video so there could be many reasons friends let us try to understand one is many organizations have do not have complete understanding of likelihood and impact of risks okay so often they discuss on what has already been discussed in the past okay another thing is many organizations are not aware of what they might find out when they trying to do this risk assessment and it could be a very different area to what they are you know familiar with that's why they never perform it because they are worried about that okay so many organizations have uh, you know do not have a clear picture of where they stand you know with their business continuity measure with the disaster recovery measures so they do not even uh, have a basic understanding of uh, disaster recovery business continuity that's why in, uh, they never want to focus on this risk management of efforts okay because they do not have those functionality in place not because they do not want to not because they are uh, they do not actually want to have these uh, things in place but because of business constraints or because of the small size of those organizations okay there could be many reasons another thing could be there there is a this is a very common one okay so many organization have very limited time and especially very limited resources and capital to improve the resiliency which risk management offers okay so they do not focus on recovery plans and risk management objectives okay so these are some of the reasons why this is not being performed okay and again different type of risks which are present in any organization is again this is something you should be familiar with one is i already mentioned technological outages if you do not have redundancy in place you your business will face a lot of risk there could be technical outages you know your servers might be down your databases might be down if there is there are single point of failures okay and there could be ransomware attack there could be data breaches which could happen to the organization if the risk management is not in place okay um, different things could be uh, place like you know human errors could be there okay uh, you know no processes in checks uh, in in place no checks in place so these are kind of you know main challenges and risks that any organization will face okay so make sure that you understand whatever we have discussed in this video and i do not want to keep it very long but i want to be informative uh, in this video again if you have any comments if you have any uh, you know thing you wanted to ask me feel free to add in the comment section thank you so much for watching take care bye bye